Welcome back to Live with Gabby. Jason Fleming has stayed with me. And as it's Halloween, we welcome supernatural expert Deborah Hyde to the show. You are more than welcome. Uh, so if you've had a supernatural experience and you're curious to know a bit more, email me, gabby at channel5.com. Call us, though, as well. 0207-173-5555. Herman, the iPad? The iPad, my darling. There thank, you are. Thank, mm, thank you to Richard Jones there. Well, Deborah, the supernatural expert, may be able to clear a few things up with us as to just how rife supernatural activities in the capital are. Is it, is it just ideal? ideally positioned London, you know, the old narrow streets. And... I think, well, there are certainly environments that are more evocative of stories, and given that I believe that supernatural um, things come from human beings rather than from any outside agency, then something that helps to evoke those stories mm. is, is always going to help. Um, there's beautiful places in the East End, all of Jack the Ripper territory and everything. Mm. Looks well, you great. know all about them. I was going to ask you about your supernatural experiences. You worked on that. Yeah, I did a film called From Hell, which is about the Jack the Ripper story with Johnny Depp. And um, the, is it the Ten Bells, the pub? The Ten Bells in The White Ten Chapel, Bells yeah. Whitechapel. We had it built and it was in um, the Czech Republic in Prague. And it burnt, the set burnt down twice. And no one would go on the set of the Ten Bells unaccompanied. Just a really incompetent spark you work in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very bad electricity in there. But it's, it's Are you superstitious? Because, I mean, a lot of actors obviously don't mention the play. I, I, I would say I'm very superstitious. And yet I still say, oh, I don't believe there's anything yeah. out there. But, I, you know... Well, do you have rituals? You yeah, to... definitely. Before I do, when I film, I always flick my face before before the take. Always, and um, I touch certain things. You know, it's do you touch wood. I definitely touch wood. Definitely. So I mean, I, I'm very. Do you walk under super... ladders? I don't go under ladders. Never go under ladders. I'm very superstitious. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's it rules your life, by the sounds of Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very difficult to get rid of conditioned reflexes, even if you don't yeah. believe in them. I, I don't believe in any of this stuff, but I still throw salt over my left shoulder, and I think it's incredibly difficult to shake. And if you've grown up with it as well, yeah. it's learned behaviour like yeah. that, it's difficult, isn't it? OK, well, it is, of course, Halloween. That's why we're talking about all this. And people are getting spooked at uh, parties up and down the country, dressed as vampires, <laughs> werewolves and witches. But have you ever asked yourself, Where's the lighting gone? No, have you ever asked yourself, <laughs> is it possible that these bloodthirsty, curse conundring creatures may well have existed and may well still? Deborah Hyde is a writer on The Supernatural uh, for over 20 years, so that's exactly what we're going to kick off with. What is The Supernatural? It's something that... It, it, it's just something that we can't explain, but just because something's unexplained, it doesn't mean it's inexplicable. Um, there's been so much work done on what people mistake for supernatural occurrences. There was a study by Tandy and Lawrence, and they went round all of the old creepy places, and they found cockroaches, mice, water knocking. There are so many um, prosaic reasons for why people mm. end up believing in uh, supernatural things. And sleep paralysis, I think, is probably one of the biggest ones. Well, we'll talk a bit more about sleep paralysis but Herman, it's been a while since you've done anything, and I know that you've got a special drink for I've got a very special drink here, Gabby, made by Grandpa's Gun. It's a very special smoothie, and it's just for you two right here. Now, I think they should down it in one, don't you, everybody? <laughs> Do you? What is it? It's Grandpa's Gun. Can I have a look? Well, you can have a smell, you can have a taste. Um, you I don't can... have to down it in one, I'm only joking. I can sniff it first. Sniff oh. it, that's right. It, it smells very nice. Oh, I was doing the... <laughs> it doesn't smell nice things. He was doing, he was doing the acting <laughs> Come on, Deborah, play it again. Come on, Sorry. down in one now. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's back to his old guy, Richie Lockstock. Yeah. <laughs> Watching Gold Green now, just like me. You part own a pub, don't you? I used to, yeah. So is that where that skill comes from, then? Yeah, well, I learned that. I learned that. That's, that's in learned, acting school? Yeah, that was from acting <laughs> school, yeah. Um, let's talk about a few of the headlines uh, affecting this area. Obviously, everybody's dressing up over the mm -hmm. weekend. Uh, Kelly Brook has gone for uh, the twilight look Aww. with her uh, boyfriend, Tom Evans, is there on the right, and his mate. Um, she's gone as uh, Bella Swan. An understated look for Kelly, obviously. Wow. Um, but uh, the three of them looking rather good there. The, the key question, <laughs> you like that, do you, yeah. Jason? Tom, was Tom doing it, the bare yeah, chest? the boys, I was more impressed <laughs> with the fellas, to be honest. <laughs> and that's not like me. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is the phenomenon of vampires, you know, is it something you buy into? Where do they come from? Do they exist? Folklorically, vampires are associated with epidemic death. Mm. Um, I did a, a short video that's available on the internet about vampire belief in 19th century New England, which is actually fairly recent, but really. Why has it, it become so much more fashionable again? And, you know, it's obviously in a I lot of 
Hollywood films, yeah. a lot of books. I think the folkloric and the literary vampires are different, but because the archetype is so good, it's so useful, um, that it's, it's been used for literary purposes. And the, the original vampire would explain epidemic death, and you could do really peculiar and quite gross things to exhumed bodies to try and stop the epidemic. But now it's, um, you know, it's sexuality, they're all dazzlingly attractive, and it's very aristocratic because they're very, um, they're very lonely. Zombies are a bit... Uh, zombies are, are things of the crowd, but, uh, are, are, you know, vampires are very lonely, very aristocratic, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to say anything about any of your family. Mm. <laughs> um, so, so they, they they're quite glamorous, aren't they? Ideas, why, yeah. why, why are vampires, it's a, bit, a big thing with, you know, young girls and, yeah. you know, sort of 17, 18 year old girls, they're all obsessed with vampire stuff. Is it just because of Hollywood and because they're all really attractive and good looking, or is it something darker? Well, it's sort of, it's sublimated sexuality and it's, um, it, it, it's penetration in a more acceptable sense and it's, <laughs> You know, because <laughs> you, you Taxi. don't. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you hadn't gone down yeah. that road. <laughs> down that road. <laughs> You've got these very masterful male types as yeah. well. They can take control, and they really—they're very old, so they know everything, and they've got their own car, which is not something every fifteen-year-old yeah, boy true. has, true. Yeah. unfortunately. And now there's uh, quite a lot of supernatural activity at the cinema, as we've said. Here's a bit from Paranormal Activity Three. <laughs> Whatever happened to us when we were little? I don't remember anything. <laughs> Whatever it was, it thrived on fear. The more we paid attention to it, the worse it got. OK, so it's very kind of Blair Witch, you know. It's like the camera's locked off. We're going to go to sleep and see what happens. Yeah. Um, a little bit of uh, tinkering goes on there, no? Yes. Oh. Well, where does it, I mean, how, can, you know, how can you explain it? stuff that goes on there. Well, the, the kinds of... I watched Paranormal Activity 1 over the weekend and I thought it was a very well-directed movie. I thought the mm. suspense really, really built. Did, yeah, did it's very good. I like it. And um, there, are, there are things that people do. She, she stood there in a trance and people obviously do go into trances. There's also accounts of ghosts pulling the covers off people while they're mm. asleep. I've experienced that. So You've but, experienced a ghost pulling a cover off? Yes, or what I think. You know, I wake up, the cover's So how would you and... explain it then? And you're, you know, you're a cynic in, in some respects to this, aren't you? You're a skeptic. So. Yes. Well, the, the, that's the sensation. You you get um, you get bad feedback from your body while you're asleep, and you can mistake it in the process of actually waking up. So I'd probably thrown the cover off myself, mm. but experienced it being taken mm. off me in real time, which isn't what happened. Another time, I had. Um, I had something pull the cover back and I could, I could feel it sort of diagonally across me and I couldn't see whatever it was and it was very curious about me, it was really freaky and it said hello and um I made it sound like Kenneth Williams, didn't I? Yeah. Yes. Uh, that would be really <laughs> scary. That, we now know where the ghost of Kenneth Williams is. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, your gaff. But then I, I woke up and the cover was back in its place and it's just hallucinations, but they're not while you're asleep, they're while you're sort of half asleep and you mistake them, you think they're in the real okay. world. Just a quick one for you, Jace. We've had a tweet from somebody asking whether you're going to be uh, back in Primeval. Um, I'm not. Primeval... Um, Terry. ITV and the wisdom of, uh, have departed their relationship with Prime Evil. So, fingers crossed it'll be picked up by someone else eventually, but in the meantime, sideburns. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah, Channel never 5 know. might pick it up. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> OK, uh, thank you for joining us today, Deborah. Fascinating area, and uh, hopefully we'll be back sometime soon. Jason.